Hey guys, my name's Josie and this video is all about this sofa, basically, and how I made it from scratch. Just gonna bust off out of here. When I say I've built this from scratch, what I mean by that is I've designed it, made all the frame, foamed it all, holstered it, I then cut out the foam for the cushions, sewed all the cushions, I feel like I'm literally bragging. Never brag about yourself. But let me just give you a brief history on my previous sewing and furniture making skills. Yeah, I have none, so. This is why I'm pleased with myself. It's like really not bad at all, I don't think. Plus, it's super comfy. So I just want to briefly mention why I did this. Why I built a sofa from scratch. I'm a van life wannabe, and I say wannabe because I hope to be living in a van soon as I'm currently mid-build. It's definitely the norm for van lifers to build their own furniture. Because you're dealing with such a small space, you need to make sure that every piece of furniture fits really snugly. So now you know my why, let's talk about my what. What I wanted my sofa to be, and what were my priorities. priorities. My number one priority was comfort. I didn't want to go to somebody else's house, sit down on their sofa, and notice any difference between their sofa in their house, in their apartment, and my sofa in my van or bus. My bus. It's a bus. <laughs> For me, that meant that it had to be sprung and bouncy. And I wanted like really soft, tactile material. It's velvet. Bougie. The second priority was I was dead set on having an L-shaped sofa. I feel like an L-shaped sofa to me is the ultimate lounging sofa. Do this. This is my favourite position. <laughs> Leg spread. Not like that. My other priority is I wanted somebody to be able to sleep in it. In the bus I have a fixed double bed but I also wanted to be able to sleep in third person and that meant that I didn't want to compromise on like, the width of the seat. So if I take this off, I'll just put them down there for a second actually really quite wide so someone could easily sleep here. The sofas ended up being quite big. <laughs> you could probably fit four people comfortably even though I've got the tiniest tiniest space when it comes to my van as my permanent home it's tiny but I can still fit four people lounging. It's great. So my final priority is I wanted it to be as eco-friendly as possible and how I plan to do that is by using recycled or secondhand materials where I could. So without further ado, let's go into the making of the sofa. Step one, work out what size I want the sofa. So I wanted the sofa to be the whole width of my bus. So that's 190 centimeters, which is six foot two, roughly about the same length as a small cat. And then the L needed to be 165 centimeters, which is about five foot five, roughly the same length as a small donkey. Step two, get all of the materials. I needed woods, springs, spring hooks, foam. Bought new would have cost me something like wood roughly be about 75. Springs and spring hooks together would probably be about 30 pounds. Foam would need back pillows, boarding, 48 pounds, 20 pounds, 50. So total would be two, two, three. I had this idea to buy a secondhand sofa from a charity shop. I thought I could take it all apart and reassemble it in my measurements that I wanted. So that is exactly what I did. So here is the local charity shop that I went to and here is the old sofa that I got. Step three, take apart the old sofa. Taking apart this sofa took so much longer than I expected and I made such a mess in the house. Step four, build a base frame. So I actually don't have any videos of me making my frame, but here is a video of me holding my frame. Though to be honest, this is probably the first version of it. I had to take it apart and remake it multiple times because one, I wasn't happy with the size and then I decided I needed the L bits to be detachable to make it easier for me to transport back to the bus. Step five, reassemble the old sofa, the spring bit. Again, absolutely no video videos of me doing this, great. But here it is anyway, this is the front and this is the back. So all I did was I saw off the edges. Then I added these like wood pole thingies so that it wouldn't collapse. Step six, make sure my, make sure my base frame fits the, okay, so I'm gonna call this contraption a spring lid just so that everyone's aware. A spring lid because it's gonna sit on top of the base frame like a lid and then springs because you know, it's got springs in it. So that's where the springs come from. So yeah, a spring lid. Okay, so now we know the terminology for these parts. Let's just start the step all over again. Step six, make sure my base frame and spring lid fit together. So here's the base frame and here is the spring lid fitting perfectly on top. Yeah! Step seven, work on the back of my sofa. Let's just look at Joey and Chandler's chair from Friends for a second. It is known for being crazy, crazy comfortable. Oh. 
one. And one of the reasons why the chair is so comfortable is because of the recline. Experts say that the most comfortable back pitch angle, that's the technical term for it, is 15 degrees. So I was determined to have that angle on the backs of my sofa. So in order to have the back pitch angle, experts also say it is very important for your seat part of your sofa to drop slightly towards the back. This prevents you from sliding off when you're leaning back, basically. Oh dear. Don't worry, I already made this adjustment to my spring lid. I just didn't tell you then because it wouldn't have made sense, but now it does, so I'll just let you know. And my last attempt at making my back the most comfortable back ever is I used elastic webbing instead of any solid wood for the back. Again, trying to just create that ultimate comfort. Here we have the back of the old sofa, and this was me at the beginning of the day, but I'm dealing with the back again. I need to just make it into the my size and also manage a new way of fixing that back to my, what did I call it, a spring lid my spring lid. Me at the end of the day. What it looks like now is kind of a sofa. Okay, so what you can see here is my base frame with the spring lid on top and that's my newly adjusted back. Step eight, build the L part of the sofa. Base frame, lid, back. First, I use wood to make the frames for each part, the base, the lid, and the back. And then I stapled elastic webbing onto the lid. And then the back and unintentionally made an out of tune instrument. Step nine, I decorated the base frame. Okay, so I'll admit now this step was completely unnecessary. Simply unnecessary. And especially because of where I was in the build, like there was just no point of me decorating the base frame. But anyway, I feel like maybe I needed a break from building and I wanted to do something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. I am painting. I've just painted the frame of the sofa, all white. So after I painted, I used pallet wood to decorate the front. I've decided to go to my local town's industrial estate and ask for free pallet wood. Loading up my first batch of pallet wood to wheel home on my 15 minute walk. Wish me luck. I literally just spent the whole day sanding and painting pallet wood. Really quite boring. It was definitely a big effort to get that pallet wood, then sand it, then paint it. Now, when I think about my sofa, I think I'm gonna use the underneath part of the sofa as storage, so fit drawers and stuff in it instead of that pallet wood. I'm gonna literally take that all off and start again. So like I say, pointless step. Stupid. Step 10, check it can support your weight. I just needed to make sure that it wouldn't collapse when I sat on it. Step 11, foam it up. So I got the foam from the old sofa. I recycled that, used that to foam the back and I stapled it basically to attach it. I've used up all the foam from the old sofa. That's all gone. But what I have got is this and it feels like wool. You know HelloFresh? Josie, it's not HelloFresh, it's Mindful Chef. Idiot. Mindful Chef, delicious meals delivered to your door. This is the insulation for the food box. It's really, really soft So I'm, and I've got loads of it. So I'm just using as much of it as I can. And this is what a foamed sofa looks like. Yeah, awful. Blech. So that is all of the sofa building done. Good. Good job. And now we're on to fabric, upholstery, and sewing. Yeah, let's go. Step 12, fabric. Okay, so obviously you already know that I chose a pink velvet fabric, but why pink? I, I'm not, I don't really know, actually. I think maybe if you were looking at this sofa and my Instagram, you might automatically assume that pink is my favorite color. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> It's not actually green is my favorite color but anyway so i am a little bit i am a little bit worried that i've just chosen pink because it's fashionable right now i just went to the shops and i thought i'd have a look at the homeware section i swear everything and i mean everything was pink and gold so my question is have i just become a victim to fashion and trend <laughs> probably sounds likely and will my pink sofa date I didn't realize it was such a popular color pink at the moment. Is it popular? Do you love pink? So potentially, yeah, my pink sofa might date. But anyway, so I wanted to use recycled materials, right? And I thought eBay would be the perfect place to source secondhand velvet curtains. So at first I bought one pair and then I quickly realized that that wasn't gonna be enough fabric. So then I ordered three more pairs off eBay. But when they arrived in the post, it was clear that they were all completely different color pinks. Okay, get ready for another story of fabric dilemmas, okay? <laughs> God. I guess that's the downside to buying online and secondhand and stuff. It's just somebody with a random pair of pink curtains. They just have one. You know, you can't order like multiple supplies off of them. But by this point, I'd already spent this much on fabric. 
Uh, so I decided to roll with it. Tamsin from my Instagram community named the sofa 50 Shades of Pink, which I thought was so fitting. So that's what it's called. So I tried to incorporate all of the fabrics so that it kind of looked uniform-ish. So it's actually a reversible sofa. I'm gonna show you on here. So one side of the sofa looks like this. This is one side of the pillow. And the other side looks like this. Completely different fabric. Got the stripes. 13. Draw out pattern and cut. So after I decurtained the curtains, I laid it out flat and began to measure up and sketch out my pattern. So I needed to make four seating cushions and three back cushions. And I chose to make a style of cushion that needed boxing, which is this part, and piping, which is basically this. In fact, my back cushions had double piping. That is a lot to cut out and it was done over a few days and I ended up with lots of piles of different things. Step 14, sewing. So I think the whole process of me sewing these cushions took me about two weeks. And now I can safely say I am now comfortable with the sewing machine. And if you are particularly interested in how I sewed all my cushions and things like that, then at the end of this video, I'm gonna leave like all the YouTube links that I used to help me do this because really and truly, YouTube was my best friend here. Step 15, cut out foam for cushions. So now I'm going to go on to making the foam for the cushions and I'm just going to reuse the foam that I got from that um, old sofa from a charity shop and then just cut that to my size. I just wanted to share with you what a bodge job I'm doing about cutting up this foam. For starters I'm using a kitchen bread knife. Once I had the right size of foam for my cushions, I then covered them with the old wadding from the old sofa and sewed them in. And then finally to finish them off I put them in the old net again and recycled from the old sofa. Step 16, upholstery. I am telling you now, this is a two person job. It's actually the main thing that I needed to get help with on this sofa build. And I was so lucky that my mom was around. So basically what you need is one person to like pull it really, really tight. And then the other person needs to staple it down in place. And finally, step 17. I know there's so many steps, sorry. It has to be broken up into steps off it's very overwhelming. Anyway, step 17, put cushion covers on cushions, assemble all parts of the sofa, and then put it all together. So this sofa is made up of individual parts and this is actually to make it easier to transport it back to the bus. If you're interested in seeing what my sofa will eventually look like in my bus, then make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss that video. That is the whole of the building the sofa process done in 17 steps. Sorry, I know that was long. Well done for getting through it. Now I'm gonna spill the beans on how much it actually cost me to build. Ready? The grand total of this sofa build was... Before you go, I just wanna leave you with three things that I've learned from this sofa build. Very, very important, okay? One, strengthen your joints. Please strengthen your joints. My sofa actually collapsed a couple of times before I did this. I'm gonna strengthen the joints so that it doesn't collapse like it did last time, or I hope not anyway. So I just bought a few bags of these. It is so important, strengthen them, strengthen them. Okay, my second lesson that I learned was that the sewing people of YouTube are your best friends. Like seriously, they are so good. In fact, my favorite person to use, I used her for all of my cushions. She was a little funky chair. I have never really sewn anything before this and I found her tutorials really easy to use, really easy to follow and they came out great. So my third lesson that I've learned, you will go wrong. You will mess up. If you need to, take a break. That's fine. Come back. You will eventually get there in the end. I had multiple times where I was so unbelievably frustrated and uh, basically what I want to do now is to finish the video to leave you with all the clips of me basically getting pissed off. I think I cried actually once. Yeah, there you are. Um, thanks for watching and please enjoy me getting pissed off. Sat down on it and then something popped. So basically one of the backs of my sofa, thankfully the little back, because I've been furious if it was the big back, I'm still pretty pissed off, has uh, just come apart and it's really annoying. I think for me to fix it, I'm gonna have to take apart everything, take off the uh, webbing. Right, I'm annoyed. But I've left the sofa 
because again it's pissing me off it seems to be the main thing that's pissing me off problem that i was having on sunday that made me really pissed off uh, about the sofa is now just turned into a nightmare the whole frame's collapsed it's basically just planks of wood now i don't know how else to do it why would it not tell you in the instructions to like catch something that's going to fall into a gap why do they have gaps underneath What do you think I should do? Just tip it up and hopefully something will fall out? I feel like it might have been in there. I can't unscrew that. That's ridiculous. It's not. I, where has it gone? I don't understand. Where? Where? Where has that got? Where has it gone? But turns out I've put it on the wrong corner. So I've got to unpick all of that work that I did couple of days ago it's it's a no it's a no from me i'm leaving it the end bye bye see ya because if she have my because if she has muddy paws it doesn't ex because if she has muzzy no because if she has muzzy paws it doesn't accept ah! that's so annoying